Hello everyone, I guess you hopefully you're having a wonderful day. Today we are here with episode number 101 of the Iron Man series, a series in which uh, I go about playing the Iron Man account in hopefully a joyous way while trying to progress my account. Currently nowhere near a bank, so let me go ahead and find one of those real quick. As for where we stand, starting off this episode with a 6.73 bill bank. Uh, starting to look at the bank value again because we've had quite a nice little run up lately. Last episode we managed to get a shadow, the episode before that we got a sight, so... I'm going to say, probably not going to be able to one-up that this go-around unless we get the Tebow, but uh, you, know, you never know. Um, in terms of collections logged, if we go look at raids, I'm basically done with both of the raids. Uh, theater of Blood, I mean, I could get a Sang, I could get a Face Guard, but really neither of those are going to mean all too much, especially the Sang now that I have the Shadow. You know, it loses a lot of its meaning. Uh, I could go back and will go back at some point to learn hard mode Tob. I would like to do that to transmog the pet, get some nice little kits and all that stuff. Uh, TOA, I only need the mask, so I certainly will still send some TOA. I uh, also would like to try out the shadow there. But uh, yeah, this go around, definitely going to be trying out the shadow at different places, seeing how that is going to work for me. And also definitely going to do Desert Treasure 2. This has been on my list for a while, but I really was sort of waiting for the right moment and now that i've basically completed two of the raids i think now is a good time so that's the plan uh at least for me to start i probably am going to make some potions as well uh got some restores laying around got some brews as well so just going to be able to uh, dabble in that but uh, should be fun miscellaneous bossing some questing as well and kind of you know sitting back and enjoying the late game now they say uh once you max you can enjoy the game well i'm not gonna ever max at least you know not soon. So uh, I think once you get two of the three mega rare webs, you can kind of relax. So that's the plan for me. Let's see where it takes us. So beginning the episode with a little bit of Slayer. Uh, I guess also the last bit of Slayer, at least here at Cerberus, that I'll be doing. Uh, as we know, or if you don't know now, you know. Uh, I like the round KCs. So uh, I've gotten everything I need at Cerberus now at this point. Last episode, I was able to knock off the Smoldering Stone. And I really have no ambition for the Jar of Souls or the Hell Puppy. Uh, especially considering supply waste that goes on at Cerb. It's just not worth worthwhile so gonna put that away in the back burner uh go kill some hellhounds maybe do some hard clues we'll see how that goes but uh yeah no more boss of that for me happy to be able to cross off another as far as i'm aware that's the first completed raid with the shadow in terms of a solo so happy about that uh did get in right under the 40 minute timer which wasn't ideal it really does do work on the wardens but uh times still aren't as great as they could be so i'll continue working on it but uh white chest there sad scam game but 354 kc uh you know Never get lucky here, of course, but uh, yeah, I really like the shadow. I mean, uh, you know, 8.2%, definitely not bad. Probably could get nearly the same if I ran free-for-all since I just sort of bully people now with the DPS, but uh, I've gotten bullied for an adequate amount of time, so I think it's fair. I also do like the solo chests. They're usually packed like this one. I don't know, I might run another... TOA or two, but uh, I think the real thing that I want to go ahead and knock out, which I've been hinting at for a long time, is DT2. Technically, no prequests that I need to do. I sort of want to do some small odd and end ones, but uh, yeah, I think we'll just knock it out. Let's go ahead and give it a go and see what it's about. Should unlock a lot of bosses. That'll be fun. Also, some teleports and all that jazz, so uh, let's do it. I've got to say, um, you know, not too far into the quest. This is sort of near the beginning, but this has to be one of the most frustrating... <laughs> pieces of any quest I've ever been a part of. All you gotta do is just run back to the spot where we're trying to get to, which is some pyramid somewhere, and if any of these things hit you to a decent degree along the way, you just get reset, and there's really no way of avoiding them. For some reason, they don't really freeze until you get into combat with them. Like, if I send a freeze out right now, I don't think it's gonna freeze anything. Somehow there's nothing here to attack me at the moment. This has been the clearest path I've ever had. Of course, I throw the recorder on and I start looking dumb. But yeah, they, they freeze you and then everyone's over here. I try freezing them, I run away. I'm only at 28%, which is really, really good. Now I'm probably just gonna speed right through it and make it look like it's nothing, but wow, I mean, this is ridiculous. Anyways, uh, probably had gotten sent back at least five to ten times. I had to go ahead and rebank because it was so bad at one point, but, uh, I think we're gonna make it. If not, then, you know, I don't know what to do. There we go. Okay, I guess it was that easy, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was losing my mind beforehand. So. Slowly but surely, uh, haven't even fought the first boss yet, so we'll see how those are as we go. Uh, quest version of the bosses are always gonna be easier, at least as far as I'm aware. I'd assume that's the same here. Uh, I haven't tried them out yet, so it's gonna be a learning experience, but I'm looking forward to it. Shadow and Scythe, I feel like, you know, should be pretty easy. All right, let's give the first one a go. Vardavis here. Uh, we'll see what it's all about. Uh, I heard a slash weapon was good. Uh, signs have slash, so I, I just assume that this is what I should bring. Could have looked at the wiki, but uh, what fun is that? 
from what I understand, though, pretty uh, devastating attacks in here. Um, at least, you know, depending on uh, if your prayer's up, where you're at in the room, all that jazz. We'll see how it goes, though. Sadly, only two hits on the scythe here. Uh, not ideal. Okay, Axe has got to avoid. Nice and easy. Uh, 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 okay. Uh, yeah, apparently if I do that uh, outside of the quest, it's going to be a lot more damaging. Corners of the room are good. I'm learning that much. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Oh, my lord. <laughs> oh my god yeah uh you know scythe not really doing anything too crazy here i will i will say uh the axes are also terrifying um just whenever yeah there's three of them going around it's, it's kind of hard to avoid but there we go uh finished off that kill was not all that easy i will say use a decent amount of food even on the quest version of the boss so that is a uh, little scary one kc at least um from what i could tell damage wise at least from the video i was watching it seems like the post quest boss does more i just assume that that's the case but it is weird that you get a kc i will say yeah so it says it's level 784 i'm pretty sure that was level like psh, five something so yeah that checks out but yeah this is gonna be a long quest so i'm gonna get hoofing didn't record that boss fight because honestly it wasn't all that intense and i didn't think that really anything much was going to happen and then suddenly leviathan just kicked in with some sort of machine gun aspect that i was not prepared for i got utterly ripped apart which is you know why my inventory is practically empty managed to safe up somehow and uh, got on out of there without a scratch so yeah two out of the four and uh we keep kicking there we go another one down three out of four i think i like this one the most out of any of the bosses so far so i'll give it that i did die a bunch though so that's also uh, a downfall but uh, you know it, it was decently fun i enjoyed that one the most for sure one more to go and uh, we'll be on the way i also will add i don't know how people do this low level or at least how they keep their sanity i'm losing my mind i have pretty good gear generally speaking and uh you know max stats and all the food you could ask for i guess i could bring more brews i'm trying not to use too many but still i've been dying a ton though i couldn't imagine if you actually struggled a bit more with the fights just tough oh my gosh <laughs> oh my god uh, <laughs> you gotta be kidding me obviously you know i liked afk you get the idea look down in the chat though and uh this mysterious figure it's sort of the same thing as desert treasure one where the one guy comes around and he'll attack you i totally forgot about it but yeah i think he just attacked me and he, he probably took it i might have to go back and kill him again I can't get out too. Hopefully, he didn't take all my gear. Thankfully, JX spared me the time on that. I didn't have to get the medallion again, so that's nice. Would have been beside myself if I lost the medallion after that. That would have been awful. All right, three out of four. Closing in on the end of DT2. Still have to kill one more boss, but uh, I guess right now I'm beneath, beneath the Ice Mountain, so I'm like way down here. Probably one of my favorite cities I've ever seen in game, though. I mean, it just, it looks beautiful. I'm a little biased. I do like purple and sort of eerie scenes, and this matches up quite well. But yeah, if this is like a spot I can access after the quest is over, I'd definitely be hanging out at a bank. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a weird one, huh? Even a more advanced version of the Lunar quest line here. Yeah, I, I don't know what I'm getting myself into to here i just read the wiki on this final boss fight it sounds absolutely terrible <laughs> like i think there was at least three or four phases all with very unique and intricate routes that need to be taken uh certain attack styles honestly i don't remember any of it so uh i guess you learn by doing so let's go ahead and give that a go and see what happens here goes the fun part got the whisper coming out of the water and uh ready to go let's see what it's all about um am i am i dead already <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. I think I understand. I got to move. Uh, uh, uh. I got to hide back here. Right. Right. Activate this. See what the health's at. So this one I think is good for now. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh. Gotta go. Gotta go. Gotta go. Not great, but uh, yeah, no, we got through it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, one death down, but that wasn't, that didn't seem too bad. So hopefully it's better. Not gonna lie, that was, uh, that was pretty awful. <laughs> Got a KC though, so I'll take it. And, uh, we should be on our way done with this quest at this point. Oh, man, that's just, I have a headache after that. Uh, probably died like four or five times. Mostly just going insane in here in terms of actual sanity, not, not my personal sanity although that was being questioned at times too but but yeah glad it's done uh 
honestly, I don't like many of these bosses, I would say, at least from my first encounter. Uh, the guy that was stuck in the wall, I think that's Duke. I liked him, but uh, other than that, just brutal. At long last, here we are. This should be, as you can tell by the inventory, I was about to die again, and it was not easy, let's just say that much. But yeah, I think this is it. Should get a, a nice XP lamp. Uh, should get, I think, five quest points, something along those lines. So uh, yeah, don't mind me. 290 quest points, ability to use ancient rings, access to four new bosses. That's going to be a, a tough go, but I'll have to learn some of them as we go. Well, uh, we'll see where the wind takes me. I think Vardavis and Duke are probably the two I want to do the most, considering uh, both of those involve using the scythe, which I'm pretty jazzed about. But yeah, just glad this is over and happy to get to uh, some new bosses, so that'll be fun. There's the first drop here of Artivis. Uh, well, you know, Clog as well, I guess that's something. But uh, First Awakener's Orb, plenty more to come in regard to that. Actually, was expecting my first drop to be the teleport tablet that you can get to get back here a little bit quicker. Um, funny story, I didn't know, at least at the beginning, that there was this little shortcut over here that you could just, like, straight go from the boat right to here. I was taking the long way all the way around. It felt pretty egregiously long, but I just figured, you know, they're really pushing for me to get this tablet. Eventually, I saw someone running out through there, so luckily he sort of helped me out. But, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying this. That was, uh, so far, two kills this trip, so, I mean, I could almost, I mean, I certainly can at least get three kills in a trip, sometimes four, depending on if I'm paying attention. So, let's just say, you know, the gaming has been going a little bit more swimmingly than it was during the quest. I'm hoping that's the same case for the other bosses. Uh, I do know that this is probably one of the easier ones, at least from the quest that I did and sort of my experience there, but uh, yeah, looking forward to more. There we go, nice and easy. We uh, managed to get the Strangled Tablet, which uh, I'll go ahead and add to, I think it was a Shadow Ring, something along those lines. Nice little clog. Yeah, it's a 1 in 25 drop. Took me almost 40 KC, which actually it was exactly 40 KC, which isn't too shabby. A little over the rate, but that's okay. Uh, PB is at 1 minute 4 seconds, which at least to me felt really, really solid. I got, I think, a sh Elite CA for that, 5 points. Yeah, so I already have 3 out of 9. I believe it was actually a Master CA in terms of Speed Chaser, yeah. There it is, plus five for a minute and five seconds. Uh, scared to see what the lowest is. Yeah, 55 seconds. I mean, doesn't seem impossible. Uh, I got another minute and four seconds right after that kill within a couple kills, and I felt like there was a couple points in that that could have been a bit quicker. So that'll be a fun one. Uh, what, 50 times, so we'll hit that here soon. Two mil or less in total gear. I, that's crazy that they can even sort of calculate that while you're, while you're gaming. I'm impressed. I did see that on the wiki that like perfect kills mattered in some sort of way. I don't know what perfect kills means. Like literally not taking damage from any of the specials. I don't know if I'm that good, but we'll see. Awakened, which we'll have to try out at some point, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'm definitely enjoying this boss, so I'm probably just going to camp it for a little bit, but I'll definitely have to mix in some other ones just to, uh, you know, uh, have a little bit of fun. Yeah, so it's called Ring of Shadows. Let's go ahead and use that on there, and I now have a teleport on in there, so that's lovely. I no longer have to use a stamina whenever I go kill this thing, which will be nice, and uh, let's see where it takes us. So use a teleport. Hop on over there, and uh, hopefully it's it's nice and close. Wow, that is not close at all. <laughs> I was expecting to be like right at the beginning. Um, okay, well, eh, can't win them all. A little bit of change of scenery here. I just got myself a frozen tablet from ye old Duke, and uh, 19 KC, so a little bit under rate. Happy to have gotten that. It's not too bad of a run, not as bad as the uh, strangled area was, I will say. Um, I figured whenever I went back in here that you weren't going to have to mine the salt and make these potions every single time. I thought that was just a quest thing. Little did I know. You actually do have to do that every single time. And it makes for like three-ish minute kills. I have really gotten the strategy down though. Basically just stand off on the pillar and walk back and forth whenever the spikes aren't coming up from your feet. It's a really simple kill. Early on I was struggling and it was tough. I, I didn't want to talk about it at the time, but uh, yeah, about 20 KC in and I think I'm finally getting the groove of it here. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm definitely noticing that my Scythe charges and Blood Fury charges are absolutely getting wrecked. The Blood Fury probably not as important here since I don't take that much damage, um, so I might actually just get rid of that at some point. This will also be a nice teleport for whenever I want to go get the final two pieces of the Venator bow, so looking forward to that as well. Doing pretty good on the trip loadout so far. I think this was a four or five kill one. Just got a chromium ingot. Wasn't uh, all too certain what this was. It was like 100k so I didn't even think it was really worth talking about the clog but actually you need three of these plus one of the vestiges to be able to make the rings so one out of three. Um, 
all the bosses drop it and theoretically you should have enough ingots by the time you hit the drop rate on one of the ring pieces to be able to forge it all together uh, shout out to that master clue I had to drop, but uh, yeah, one out of three and looking forward to more. Checking back in, that is the first 100kc that I've knocked out in terms of DT2 bosses, so happy to have reached that milestone. Uh, not going to stop though, typically, you know, I like the round KCs, but uh, I think I'll keep on going here, no need to stop. I, I do need an actual amulet of blood fury here in a second. Um, you know, kind of sad, but it is what it is. We'll be absolutely torching those. But uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of which one I'd be focused on, I think Vard's going to be the one because, you know, the melee ring, of course, is going to be the most useful. I guess there's two melee rings, but the, you know, berserker melee ring equivalent is really what we're here for. All righty. Well, uh, <laughs> man, isn't that lovely? I've just got an executioner's axe head. Uh, it doesn't have a GP value on it, sadly enough, but uh, basically calculating it, it's about 100 mil. The axe itself is worth 400. This is one of four pieces. It's actually like a 1 in 1,000 or a 1 in 1,100 drop, something ridiculous. So, yeah, you know, 130 makes sense to me. Um, <laughs> pretty crazy. I mean, I'm honestly really not even here for the axe. The axe would be nice, but, uh, yeah, we'll take it, certainly. Trying to aim for something along the lines of, like, 50 kills a day or so between this and Duke. Just having some fun with it. But, uh, yeah, we'll keep it going. All right, there we go. Um, uh, just picked up a blood shard here. Had to, uh, do a little bit of send in here. Get whatever AFK I can in, because, uh, blood shards are definitely getting drained at the DT2 bosses. Wanted to pick this up on camera, but, uh, had to plug in my mic. A lot of things were astray, and I didn't want any of these little leeches getting a blood shard off me. Probably gonna go and thieve a little bit, since I'm gonna watch some US soccer, and, uh, probably foot pedal, why not? I got two over there recently, and it's just a nice feeling whenever you can get two blood shards in one go, so. We'll see if it happens. Um, these are actually 11.6 mil now, which is pretty huge. I have a few alts I could bring out here. I, I don't think I will, but you know, it's at least intriguing. And there we go. We got the second chromium ingot that we're going to need. As for when we're going to need it, you know, we'll find out when the time comes. Um, barely made it through that kill there. Uh, as you can see, I have no food, <laughs> barely any prayer, but uh, we did make it through. So up to 180 KC here. I now have about 100 at Duke. I'll round that out here soon and probably 200 here as well. Definitely keep going. Uh, I'm enjoying these two bosses and they seem to be the most helpful, at least for the time being. So uh, uh, it's a good combination and we'll keep working with it. And there we go. No time at all later. We got another chromium ingot. So uh, getting these pretty decent clips so far. Uh, what was that? 234? 233 actually. Uh, 154 on the KC time. Not really all that quick. I haven't really even tested my PB ever since I got it. So dying a lot still. Dying a lot. This boss, while I do understand it, uh, can get pretty hectic at times. So I'm doing my best, but it's tough at times. Always a lovely sight to see here. Was about to go send my 100th Duke and probably wrap it up. Um, but in my foot pedaling process, we did come by two blood shards. At the moment, again, like, oh my gosh, 13.6 mil. They were at 11. I thought that was high. 13.6, goodness. So that's almost, you know, 27 mil. Took me about 5k pickpockets to hit the drop table twice. You get four from the two hits with the rogue's outfit, but yeah, love to see it. Well, this is going to be KC number 100 if everything goes smoothly. I've been kind of enjoying this boss. This one in particular, Duke, is uh, very relaxing in the sense of if you can hit your BGS specs, which we'll see here. Saint does go to town and, uh, I mean, you just walk back and forth. It's really, really simple. Early on, I was struggling because I was running backwards. And if you run back here, you get mage attacked and I couldn't figure it out. Luckily, uh, talking to the clan homies eventually figured it out. I'm glad that this and Vardivus are as good as they are in terms of rings. That way I don't feel like I'm doing anything shameful in terms of camping them. Gonna try not to die. I don't have any food on me at the moment. Ooh, just managed to uh, sneak it out, but there we go up to 100 kc love to see it and i think that's where we're going to call it for this go around 100 kc here close to 300 at vardivis at this point which is uh yeah, not too shabby no ring pieces this go around but uh plenty to continue to hunt for which i'm happy about so looking forward to hunting in the future and hopefully you are too as far as this episode goes so ending off with a 6.66 build cash value which is uh, interesting to say the least the executioner's axe head does not count at all towards that so that is kind of notable uh looking forward to being able to build on that in the future but i had a grand old time and hopefully you did too if you did make sure to leave a like would appreciate it greatly anything you want to tell me would love to see in a comment down below and if you want to see more videos like this as soon as i go live make sure to subscribe of course as always clan chat discord all that fun stuff down below but with that said hopefully you have a wonderful day and uh peace